a machine translation text, machine, machine translation, nobody's ever used that apparently. Remembering that one is never. So you know somebody might have done it by mistake once. Um, I, I was just wondering, I mean you must know that a lot of students are using free online machine translation services. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, for, for the worst possible things, and they think that's the translation. But, and nobody's doing that in class. Isn't it something good to do in class to sort of bring that along and say, look, do it the other way, going into Catalan or going into Spanish so they can see the sort of things that they have to post edit in order to make it work as a text. I mean, this might be a practical measure of protection. Right, maybe, maybe it's secondary. Yeah, no, secondary. No, this is all together. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. What about secondary? Like secondary. I think secondary should be different. I don't know, it just occurred to me that a lot of our teaching at some stage has to teach what translation is, but it'd be good to teach what translation is. And that'd be a very valuable lesson if students getting to university knew that they can't trust Google Translate. Do you think that students need to learn by translating? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> I know that's a question, okay? But I, I think that at primary level, if we were asked that question, we would probably say that very, very, very little. Because if we thought that they were learning, we would use that. Wait a minute, that's that's the sort of argument like People don't want cars, you know. If the cars were good, we'd all be driving cars. Yeah. Hmm. Just I guess yeah, I think I, I look for empirical research on any of this, and as, it, as it, any empirical research shows, well, that exclusion of L1 results in better learning. I've seen no empirical research to prove that. Two, that exclusion of translation results in better learning or the opposite. If you translate a lot, you learn better. I've seen no empirical research to, to prove that. I'm just asking. The thing is that in the previous question, rarely or never we use that. So probably there's something there. And probably it's not because what we are taught and we are said and we are asked to do is probably because of what we don't really believe that it's working. That's good. Uh, that, that's getting on to the next block of questions I've got. Is where, our, where do our ideas come from? Maybe, maybe I think it was, okay, excuse me, I'm thinking with translation we are somehow influenced by Catalan um, instructions that we have in the instructions of principle that was that it's it's totally forbidden to use any language but Catalan that we are like this and it's written in the instructions of principle that was. For who? All public Catalan schools in Catalonia, <coughs> all of them. And it's written in that there is a text which is instructions of principle. Yeah, but if we're teaching English. No, for teaching Catalan. But yeah, okay. I think that somehow we're influenced by this that you cannot do this, you can do this. So this is forbidden, this is not. But maybe mm -hmm. I had to when I was a teacher, when I learned English we have sometimes translation and I think it was good. But if if the translation was correctly that's the question. taught. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think he That's mentioned. a reordering process. Exactly. Uh, because just... otherwise what you get are children who speak English in the sense that they speak Catalan with English words. Or Spanish with English words. Well, was, uh, people in Tarragona answered um, more highly. I mean, they, they agreed more that translation takes time away from valuable learning. And a lot of it, when we ask people why don't you use translation, time was one of the things that came up all the time. <coughs> Uh, so people who are pretty much against it, and people here, proposition, translating is for professionals only. Do you agree? Uh, people tend not to agree, which implies that everybody can translate. Okay? That is, yeah, you get into double negatives here. Anyway, um, and then the last one, Translating does not allow the student to think in a new language, which is what you were saying about fluency, I think. Yeah. And I think that's a very good point. Pe more people here agreed with that than was a global average. So in some putting these together, it seemed that people in the Tarragona area were relatively against translation. 
because it, it stops people from thinking it is a language as more as for professionals who take Could be a not from Tanagoda. Well, <laughs> people who apply their own question. So, um, you didn't do too, too well. Uh, did you have trouble understanding those propositions? Can you remember doing this, people who did the questionnaire? Yeah, the first two ones were really yeah. confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. The only thing about these things is you know, more complex it gets. What do you mean by translate brings the skills of reading, writing, listening, and speaking together? I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> people agree. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a comment? No, I mean, don't know no answer. <laughs> I think there probably was. <laughs> you could just. Uh, um, I don't know. Well, I, think yeah, I think that it, the idea is that, that translating is a very complex skill and therefore should come out to the end of the learner's experience. Okay? If it's, if it's then just, you know, there, there are the four skills, and if you can put them together, translation translating is one of those exercises you should do, therefore, for very advanced learners only. Okay. If not for professionals only. We expected those two to correlate, but they didn't, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, anyway, it's just interesting to get, a, to get ideas about what people think translating is. And I was very surprised. I, I thought people, more people would say translating is for professionals only. But they would think, you know, that's a different profession. I'm training speakers or readers or whatever. Um, translation is a completely different thing. But that was very unpopular, both worldwide and, and here in Telegram. For me, the problem is the word translation yeah. in the language class as a, as a second language teacher, not as a translator. So for me, when you ask a teacher, and the teachers tell me, what do you think? Say, do you use translation in class? Oh no, translation in class. It's like, you know, but if you say, do you use the L1 to explain what you want to say in the L2? You may say yes. Do you use, do you think that your students use mental translation or mental, you know? Then yes. Do you compare languages? Yeah. Do you compare yeah. languages? Yes. 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 But do you use translation? No, because this is like um, mm -hmm. that's a fictive. Uh, yeah. it's, it's all fun. But I, 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 at some point, I use translation. But I, some people confess. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't but believe when people say that they don't use translation. I'm sorry. It's I mean, you're a teacher, you have 27 now. kids, and you manage to do. I, I mean, I took a primary school. I want to. But I mean, yeah. being I? honest, it's very difficult not to use L1 or poly translation or whatever when you're teaching your days. Mm -hmm. I mean, and yeah, in here I want to insist, I said something before. If our students were in listening to English or interacting in English like every day, one, two hours, probably they wouldn't need translation at all. Yeah. But they have two hours of English every week. That's so all. Three. Really? Yeah, now yeah. yes. Yeah. Now yeah. yes. Yeah. Two, three hours of English a week. Yeah. Of course you need translation at some point. I mean, they, they are not exposed to the language at that level in which they don't need any translation. I, in my opinion. And I do translate in every class. I'm not saying all the time, but at some point in every class, there is a moment where I translate. And we can, can most I, of the times when they want to express something sometimes, and they can't really get the way of saying it, they just ask me, I want to say this, and then I help them to translate. You translate keywords. Okay. Yes. Because it's stupid. I mean, spending. It saves I mean, time. It's going to the, yeah, it saves okay, time. So but only keywords. I mean, what, why do they have to be 10 minutes? Okay. Let me go through some questions from Fiona in London, who was actually following this week. Right? Oops. Right, just a few quick questions. Uh, do you feel you have the scope to introduce new ideas and teaching methods into the classroom? Do you have the scope, do you have the capacity yes. to experiment or introduce new ideas in the classroom? Or do you feel that you have to apply the ideas of the previous generation or of the general no, class, I think that you or feel really head free to, no, I think that you feel really free to so depending on the group you have every year changes so what about other teachers what? in primary school especially no. I can sorry yes as as you said uh, I at first I was saying it's on market of methods and depending on the group I should divide method. As I said, uh, in large classes 
it could be very difficult to work on some methods that yes, communicate. Think that you teach like 55 students to us and trying to apply the principles of communicative language teaching. Very difficult. So yes, it's very, sorry, it is very common in Turkey because uh, the translation it is still in place in some official exams. You can see that. Find the right translation of this English in Turkish. The official exams that is still used. So in general, people feel that they decide what teaching methodology they yeah. use. So, no. Do, do you think that the national, well, in Britain they're going through a debate now on the national curriculum, mm -hmm. okay, so this is where these questions are coming from, and they, 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 do you think, do we have a national curriculum or yeah. anything like that? Yeah. We do. Yeah. Does it, yeah. Does it affect the content of your lessons? <laughs> no. Holiday. National means Catalan, doesn't it? Yeah. That's for pure national is Catalan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also talked about this today. What what really uh, marks the curriculum, I think, are in the national um, instructions, like from the government or the administration, are the publishers. They are, I think, because people have a textbook, so they do what the textbook says. Okay, but yeah. I've checked Catalan language teaching policy, and it says very little. It talks about immersion, and it talks about using other foreign languages for teaching content. Because when it changes to the key competencies, now everything is like in a cloud, and nobody knows what you have to do. Well, yeah. that's not normal. I mean, no, because I mean, before they changed, it was much clearer. I mean, the curriculum, it was really fixed. They had to do this, 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 and this, and this years, year one and two, primary, year three and four. But then when they change to it, to talk about key competencies, then mm -hmm. everything is like, is a competence that they don't really know, so it's really publishers who are fixing the grammar really? content. Yeah. Yeah. It's more yeah, some of the things. So, has the, the term translation ever appeared in the list of competencies? No, no. Or no. So, no. No. so we're sort of out of that. It's, it's yeah, yeah, some, are some publishers using translation exercises more than others? Who knows? Yeah, there's some that they never use. Mm. Which ones? Cambridge, for example. Oxford. I'm not sure. Like the last abac conference. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Has anybody been? Most of the books they don't. They've been talking about using translation and adding exercises extra into the course books. I don't remember the publisher itself right now, but mm. it's becoming more and more popular translation, definitely. What about the idea that many of the textbooks are traditionally published for all foreign languages in English? It's a major industry in Britain. You know, Oxford and Cambridge live on this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they have no interest in putting in translation exercises because they have to market differently. Mm -hmm. It's just that we're slaves to commercial logic, is it? Yes, but in some books I've seen it's uh, translated into your own language. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. there, there we've got Spanish and Canada. No, it's it's sure. Sure. Yes. 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 yes, I, I worked for So they can put in translation if they want. Sorry, usually you get a dictionary at the end, you've got Catalan, English words, yeah. and Spanish yeah. words. There is a dictionary at the end, a glossary. Yeah. Yeah. I did private lessons and at the end of the book that they use, I don't know which publisher it is now. But they, they have like a grammar bank that they call and all the explanations are in Catalan. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have very yeah. pictures, well, dictionary. But the grammar bank is a Can you check what publisher the Sure. Now, is it an interesting question? Did you ever experience translation at school? This is when you were students. Yes. yes. What did you think of it? Boring. Terrible. 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 Any advice are useful? <laughs> when you did it, if you, as a student, if you did translation in your language learning classes, what did you think of it? Motive? 
Latin boring. Latin boring. Absolutely boring. 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 Boring.